Okay, here I'm just going to go over a basic overview of accrual-based accounting. Now, in accrual-based accounting, we report our revenues when they're earned, regardless of when we receive any cash payments for these revenues. And uh, we would report our expenses when they occur, regardless of when we make any cash payments against these expenses. And in both cases here, for our revenues and our expenses, we report our revenues when they're earned, and our expenses when they occur, regardless of when any cash is received here for our revenues or cash is paid here for our expenses. Now in comparison to a cash basis accounting system, we re record our revenues here when the cash is actually received and our expenses here when the cash is actually paid. For accrual based accounting, we really have four different account types. Uh, for our liabilities on the balance sheet, we'd have our unearned revenue, or it'd be called deferred revenue, and then we'd have our accounts payable, or that would be called an accrued expense. And then for our assets on the balance sheet, we'd have our accounts receivable, or accrued revenues. And then we'd have our inventories, or our prepaid expenses, and those would be a deferred expense. Now we also have a fifth class, and that would be for our depreciation or our amortization type accounts. So once we, uh, we use these accrual based accounts here to allocate our income and expenditures to the period which they actually occurred. And then once we do that, we transfer them over to our income statement or we recognize them on our income statement as revenues or expenses. Okay, let's look at how these accrual and deferral accounts work. For unearned revenue, this is where we receive a cash payment prior to earning any of the revenue. So once we earn the revenue, then we would record it here as a revenue on our income statement. Now for our accounts payable, this is where we purchase something on credit or we incur an expense and then we would later make payments on it. So when we do incur that expense, then we would recognize it here as an expense on the income statement. Now for our accounts receivable, this is where we uh, recognize a revenue prior to receiving any payments. So at the time that we uh, earn this revenue, then we'd recognize it here as a revenue on the income statement. Now for our inventory and prepaid expenses, this is where we would purchase some inventory in advance, and then when we use it, then we would recognize it here as an expense on our income statement. Okay, let's look at how we'd use an accrual accounting here to recognize revenue on our income statement. We can either do it through a liabilities account here on our balance sheet or through an asset account here on our balance sheet. So let's look at our liabilities account first. That would be our unearned revenue account or a deferred revenue. Now this is where we receive uh, some payment in advance of doing some work. So at the time that we receive this payment, we'd credit or increase our unearned revenue account and then we debit or increase our cash account. And then when we actually do the work or provide the service here, then we debit or decrease our unearned revenue account and then we credit or increase our revenue account. This is where we actually are allocating this revenue and through an accrual basis here. So uh, we don't allocate this revenue until after we receive this cash. That's why they would we would consider it a liabilities. Now if we look at our asset account here, that would be our accounts receivable. This is where we earn some revenue in advance of receiving payment. So we've provided something to our customer here. So at that time, we would actually debit our accounts receivable here and then we'd immediately recognize it here in our income statement where we'd credit or increase our revenue account. Now, um, Later, when we actually receive payment from our customer, we'd credit or reduce our accounts receivable here, and then we'd recognize our, it is, uh, the payment here as cash or debit or increase our cash account. So we allocated this revenue when it was earned, and that is uh, when we provided that service. So at that time, we recognized it here on our income statement. Okay, let's look at uh, how we'd use the accrual accounting here to recognize expense on our income statement. 
and we can either do that through a liabilities account here on the balance sheet or an asset account here on the balance sheet. And looking at our liabilities account, this would be our accounts payable or our accrued expense. And this is where we incur an expense or we purchase something here on credit prior to making a payment for that expense. So at the time that we incur this expense, we'd credit or increase our accounts payable, and then we debit or increase our expense account here on the income statement. And that's where we're allocating this expense when it was incurred, right at the time that we incurred this expense or purchased something here on credit. And then when we make a payment on this accounts payable, we'd debit or decrease our accounts payable, and then we'd credit or reduce our cash for the amount of that payment. Now, if we look at as an asset here on the balance sheet, that would be our inventory or our prepaid expense or a deferred expense. Now, this is where we purchase something in, in advance of using it. So in this case, let's look at here where we would, we would debit our inventory or increase our inventory account for that purchase, and then we credit or reduce our cash for the amount of that purchase. And then when we actually use this inventory, we would credit or reduce our inventory account here, and then we debit or increase our expense account here on the income statement. So this is how we're allocating this expense when it was incurred. And it was incurred after we purchased it. So at that time, we would, again, reduce our inventory account and then recognize it here as an expense on the income statement. So in this case, we paid something for something in advance of actually using it. Okay, there's one other group of accounts here that we have to use in accrual accounting, and those are our contra accounts. Now, those contra accounts, they offset the balance in a related account. For example, here, depreciation, that reduces a long-term asset account here, and then we'd recognize it here as an expense on our income statement. Or our allowance for bad debt, that would reduce our accounts receivable, and then we'd also have to be looking at that as an expense. And then we have other contra accounts that uh, affect our expenses or revenues here on our income statement. So we have to be concerned about allocating, uh, making our calculation, allocating uh, proper revenue and expense that they're charging here to our assets or our liability accounts here on the balance sheet. And then we have to recognize them here on our income statement, either through our revenue or an expense account. Okay, to summarize our accrual accounting, this is where we would use the matching principle. And this is where we recognize our revenue and expenses here on the income statement based on the actual period in which they occurred. Now, if we look here at our cash account, any increases or decreases in our cash here on our balance sheet don't directly correlate with the timing here of our revenue and expenses here on the income statement. And that's because we were doing this accrual accounting where we're allocating our income and expenditures to the period in which they actually occurred, not based on when we received or paid any cash.